No, I didn't understand that point. I thought she was talking about the letter. No, uh, I sent a letter. Uh, I sent a picture, a photograph of a painting that I oh. made, A Man's a Man, right. which I thought um, uh, would give you an idea of what I meant concerning this article from TV Guy. You I know. don't believe I did see it. You didn't? No, I don't believe so. That sometimes does happen because I, no, I imagine that the Tonight Show probably gets four or five thousand pieces of well, mail a week. Well, this wasn't on the Tonight, from the Tonight Show. No. no. Uh, do you have time? But anyway, I got the letter it's from your secretary, and she said how much you appreciated it, and so that's the reason I was just wondering if you ever read them, you know. Well, John, the now here's here. Phil. <laughs> uh, I, I would have liked for you to have seen the picture. Do you understand, ma'am, how difficult it would be for us to recreate the whole circumstance surrounding the incident to uh -huh. which you relate in the article and the painting? We'd have to see it. And, uh -huh. uh, uh, but John will Bill stop right. by to her house after the show. Yes, yes. Thanks Thank for calling. I'm glad you called. All right. Thanks. Really. Five days a week. Yes. <laughs> hi, hi, Johnny Carson on the line. Hello. Better get an unlisted show. <laughs> All right, I'd like to ask Mr. Carson, is that this man really drinks? And if he minds that kidding, he gets about as drinking. Uh, well, we're, we're back on a subject about, about Ed. Uh, Ed. It uh, uh, does not. Obviously, anybody who does a show five nights a week can't be an alcoholic. No. Uh, we probably make too many jokes about it, like uh, Jack Benny used to do about Phil Harris, or, or Don, or Jack Benny made about Don Wilson and his weight. It's, it's a device for humor, and sometimes we lay a little heavy on it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that he's an abstainer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for calling. Thank you. Johnny Carson on the line. Hi. Hi. I'd like to ask Mr. Carson if he books his own uh, guests on the TV show or if someone else does it for him. We have a staff. I have a producer, associate producer, and four talent coordinators who normally book the show. Although in the final analysis, I sit down with my producer and we talk over whom the guest will be. And I may uh, change it or say fine or suggest somebody else. But generally, it's done with the staff. Okay, okay thank you. Thanks for calling. Hi, Johnny Carson on the line. Hello. Well, hello, and hi, Johnny. Hi. Um, oh, and welcome to Dayton, and I'm so glad you. you finally made it. And first of all, I better tell you that you really aren't my husband's best friend, because every night he says, are you going to watch him again? And I'm so afraid I'm going to miss something. But uh, I want to ask uh, I mean, the he, other what, night. Well, I miss that. Pardon well, me? Uh, Pardon uh, me? She'd rather watch you on television than uh, talk to her husband. <laughs> yeah, I'm so afraid I'm going to miss something. Well, your husband will have to learn to put on a better show than I do. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid he might agree with you. <laughs> but listen, the other night when David Suskind was on... I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. What was me? the question? Pardon me? What was the question? Uh, was the other night when David Suskind was on, was yes. that all for real? Were they really, um, are they really enemies? No, I don't think they're enemies, but it was all for real. <laughs> uh, well, I didn't mean really enemies, but um, I felt like maybe he was trying to be nice, and she just wouldn't let him. Well, I don't think there's any great love between the two of them, but it made for an exciting show. Yes, it did. Uh, I wouldn't have missed it for anything or the, the nights following. <laughs> Mr. S David will be back with us on the 28th of this month, or of January, with uh, Bill Buckley. Oh, that, that, oh that'd be a good one. That ought to be a dandy. Oh, yes. Well, I wouldn't miss it. Well, thanks, thanks for calling, and uh, tell your husband Johnny says hello. <laughs> I will. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. He really does like him, but it's just... A, that's such a late hour for a school teacher. All right. Well, thanks for calling. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Johnny Carson on the line. Hi. Hello. Yes, ma'am. I wanted to ask Johnny if Bubbles is deceased. Bubbles. Mr. Bubbles. John Bubbles? Yes. yes. No. The last I heard, he had been in the hospital. In fact, I had a Christmas card from him. Um, John Bubbles, I don't know if you've seen him on our show. Was yes, one, that's really One half of the famous vaudeville team of Buck and Bubbles from some years ago. Yes. And I think John is in his 70s now. He was quite ill. But he seems, he's living out in California now uh -huh. uh, and seems to be getting along fine. Well, that's good. I've seen him so much on your show and had missed him slightly. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for calling. Sure. We haven't talked about uh, Doc Severinsen's clothes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, uh, he's serious, isn't he? I mean, there, this is, does he wear them in the street? Or is Doc is, I hope not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, Doc is undergoing quite a transformation since he started leading the orchestra. It started out rather conservative and as things have gone on uh he's come up with these wild wild outfits <laughs> okay and well i'd maybe write them off huh? maybe i would think so yeah johnny carson on the line hi thanks for calling um i want to ask you how old you are 
How old do you think I am? Um, I think about, well, you look like you're about uh, 40, 41. That's right. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm 44. Really? But thank you. Oh, okay, you don't look it. Thank you. Okay. Th thanks for calling. Okay, bye-bye. Hi, Johnny Carson on the line. Hello. Hi. I would like to ask Johnny, do he think that he will have any more weddings on his show? Any more what? Weddings. Oh, weddings. <clears throat> the caller doesn't sound old enough to get married, are you? Uh, I don't know how we could follow the wedding of Tiny Tim. I think we'll, we'll call a halt right there. Uh, that's, that's the only one we've, we've scheduled. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Thanks Bye. for calling. Thank you. Johnny Carson, our guest on this program. Back in just a moment. If there's political pressure put on you to have certain people on your show... Is there? Yes. No, not really. Uh, most politicians for our kind of a show are not the best guests. Because I, I don't work uh, like certain... Uh, I mean, our show is not meet the press. I don't try to uh, get involved and put people on the defensive. So most political guests for our kind of a show, uh, you don't accomplish too much uh, by asking them questions unless you really want to go after them. And that's not our bag, as they say. But okay. there's no pressure. You'll stand, please? Yes, I'd like to like ask Johnny if he's going to go uh, in the movies, and if so, what type of character would he like to play? I was, I was saying to Phil, it's a strange thing. Most people who've done television, who've played themselves, have never really successfully made the trans, trans, for transference to motion pictures. Uh, it's, it's most difficult to do. People accept you after seven years so much as yourself. I, I think to go into a motion picture and play a part is very difficult. People can't separate the personality from something you're playing. I've, I've looked at a lot of scripts. I haven't found really anything that intrigues me yet. But I think it's got to be a complete departure from what you normally do. Someone else? Who did I? Yes, you'll stand, please. Uh, I want to know, why do you do what you're doing now? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm hatching an egg here. <laughs> I mean, Coming out here? Yeah. Because I think if you're a performer, an entertainer, uh, you have to work in all fields. Uh, and most entertainers do. If, they, if you like personal appearances or concert dates or nightclubs, that's one end of it. Television's another. Motion pictures might be one. A play might be another. Uh, and I think if you like it and you like the, the contact, you go out and play all different kinds of shows. Do you, uh, do you appreciate what appearing on a program like this, uh, you know, sort of uh, does, helps the show itself? Will it? Well, <laughs> well I th you know, the, obviously the easy thing to do would be to walk away from this, you know. I mean, there's not a whole lot I can do for you, John. Uh, no, the point I'm, I'm making uh, is that I, I do appreciate your taking the time to... I'm delighted to come over here. Uh, who else did I... Yes, you'll stand. I'd like to know if you'll be rerunning Tiny Tim's Wedding because I missed that and I'd like to see it. <laughs> I don't know. That was a very touchy thing to put on the air in the first place. Uh, we had... Um, NBC originally was against it. Um... We had to, had to shoot it a certain way, which I think we did as best we could so we didn't get too personally involved. I think for a wedding on television, we treated it with about as much dignity as you could, and yet there are some people who still think it's wrong for people to get married on television, I, although I don't know why. Bride and groom used to be on for years, uh, every day. Um, I, we probably won't rerun it because I think it's a one-time type of thing. I think by rerunning it, you would uh, you'd take away from the, uh, the original. The point of sensitivity is the possibility of getting laughs on top of a, a sacred uh, occasion. And that offends people? I know. I think that there's just some people just think it is wrong for a, for a wedding to be placed on television. They figure it's more private. Yes, which is a private yes. occasion. Excuse me. This isn't my question, but you mentioned bride and groom was on the air for years. Mm -hmm. As I remember... They actually didn't show the ceremony on camera, though. They went off camera, right? Oh, no, they showed did the they ceremony, the ceremony on, on camera. They came out of the chapel, and they did close-ups of the bride and groom, and then the wedding vows. Camera. Yes, it was, it was much more intimate mm. than what we did, because we shot it off in the back. I know. Well, my question was, everybody always wants to know what you're really like. I think we know. You're a doll, I might say. But what is Tiny Tim really like? Is that the, <laughs> isn't he a put-on, really? I told him once on the show, I think, a couple years ago, I said, if, if, he, if you are a put-on, I said, it's the biggest put-on I've ever seen. I don't think so. You don't think he's 
No, I don't. I think he is just what he appears to be. Different? Yes. <laughs> Obviously. I don't think he is. He's dumb. In fact, a lot of the press got on him. I think uh, they quoted the next day in the wedding, if you remember, during the vows, he said something about uh, being puffed up. <laughs> and everybody kind of laughed until he pointed out the next day that that was from Corinthians 1 in the Bible, which it is. Uh, so he's not exactly... He was, on good, he was on good solid ground. Yes, sir. I'd yes. like to ask His Worship why they... Uh, his Worship? The, the Jack Parr program was quite controversial. Why did you... Uh, changed the format. What was your reason for that? Because, one, I'm not Jack Parr, and I think controversy, night after night, is difficult to sustain. Um, I think shows that have gone in just for controversy to bring on uh, two people with opposing views uh, is very easy night after night. It's easier to do that kind of a show than it is to get laughs. I'd rather stay in the entertainment than just to try to create controversy. And That's it should too be easy. established, too, that you, you do some uh, noble things. Well, we've had things. quite a bit. I had Dr. Paul Ehrlich on right. a couple of weeks ago the uh, biologist from Stanford. I've had Jim Garrison on. We've had quite a few people on. I think you have to do it in, in perspective with the rest of the show. But I think to fall into a habit every night and say, we're going to discuss civil rights, we're going to discuss uh, prostitution, and then pretty soon you run out of, uh, of things to talk about. Thanks for calling. Johnny Carson on the line. Hi. 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 I just wanted to find out uh, how many days ahead the show is actually taped before we see it. We do it the same day. This, uh, actually, uh, we see it live then? We tape it uh, in New York at 6.30. You see it the same night. Oh, I see. Now, the other question was, uh, since it is uh, a tape show, how, much, uh, how many times do you find that you have to edit something out because uh, your guest has <laughs> said something that isn't uh, you know, printable or speakable? Uh, very seldom, really. Uh, they'll occasionally bloop something. Uh, not very often. Most people who are on a show realize the limitations. Um, there are certain standards uh, under the Federal Communications commis Commission. <laughs> That's one of them. They should have blooped. <laughs> uh, there are certain words that you're not supposed to use. Uh, you couldn't say damn or even hell on the air a few years ago. But they will allow us an occasional one. <laughs> I don't know how corrupting that can be at 11.30 at night, but uh, they do it. I think it's loosening up a little bit. Yeah, I just know that... Uh... Quite often, when it is uh, pre-taped, you know, you, you get the impression that the reason for this is uh, for censoring. Is this the, the reason that yours is pre-taped? No, the reason is that it's much easier to do a show at 6.30 to 8 than it is 11.30 to 1 in the morning. I see. Uh, availability of guests, your audience gets tired, strangely enough, at that time of night. Many people aren't used to staying up to 1 o'clock in the morning, and they're into the studio an hour before the show, which means that they've sat there for two and a half hours by the time we're through. So we do it from 6.30 to 8, so we have, we, because we have a greater availability of guests, usually. Okay, thank you. Thanks for calling. I noticed, uh, John, that you've uh, held off uh, going with this New York uh, hair thing now. Is there a pressure on you to sort of uh, change and go with the way it is now? I notice a lot of the other personalities do change, and they seem to have a What do you mean? Well, like the long hair in the back. Now, yours, yeah. uh, you stay pretty straight. Uh, does anybody tell you to uh, change or make it longer? Or No. And the and and your clothes are, uh, well, of course, compared to Doc Severinsen, you you look uh, like. I think this is very sharp, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. I think that's nice if you're running a bingo game. <laughs> <laughs> Under the B. Hi there. Thanks for calling, Johnny Carson on the line. Hello. Uh, Mr. Carson. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I'd like to know how you like living in a big city like New York as compared with a small town like Dayton. I don't know. I think everything is really relative. I think if you enjoy your work, you can be happy any place. Uh, in the Midwest or New York or Los Angeles, I don't think that's really, Im really important. If you have a, a certain amount of friends and you, ha and you enjoy what you're doing, I think your, your locale is really unimportant. You think the people are friendlier in Dayton? <laughs> yeah. Friendlier in Dayton? <laughs> yes. I don't know. New York is always um, made to appear that all... All the people there are uh, very sophisticated. I don't think you find that. I think you find that most of the people who were born in New York have never been out of New York. New York, in many ways, is a small town. Thank you. Thank you. Johnny Carson.